Our next conversation is on business. And as we were promoting this conversation earlier, CT, we talked about leasing and what we understand by mm. leasing and asset leasing and financing. Mm. And we give the example of what we know, police vehicles. Yes. Right? Yes. So we see police vehicles nowadays. It's not those days of go to a police station and the police vehicle does not even have a light. What light? Gary, Kujuya, Mawe. Right? Nowadays, but now cops are in this constantly swanky looking vehicles. In fact, you wonder, Kony Gary, a police patangi accident nowadays. Because they don't have dents. No, they don't. It's all because of leasing. Because the vehicle is actually leased to them by a company. And the company is taking care of all those things. Mm. Servicing the vehicle. Tire, kisha, and eka tire. Gasket, kicha meka, wana replace gasket. Oki gonga ta, gari ya polisi na gongangu wa ta, wana replace ta. All those things. Now, does it happen beyond what we see in public service, in, in uh, police? And yes, sir. You've said it in, also in private sector. And also, Im importantly, why is it important? Why, 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 why is it important that we should understand leasing? Yeah. Uh, how does it relate to us on a day-to-day -day basis? Exactly. Right. Yeah, because uh, what some of us are used to is you go to the bank and beg for a loan, mm. or you go to your circle and beg even more for a loan, but that one is more simpler. You beg people to support you to get that loan. Mm. Uh, we understand that. Now, this leasing concept... Leasing story. Yes, in an earlier time, some of us, when you wanted to buy something like furniture, there was Africa retail traders. Mm. Higher purchase. Yeah, yeah, that one we understood was lease also because... Mm. <laughs> yes. <laughs> 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 yeah. Yeah. Our next guest is an asset leasing finance expert. His name is Bosire Bogonko. Bosire, good morning. Good morning. Welcome to the hot seat of the situation. Robert. Thank you very much. Karibu sana. How does it feel? Quite hot already. Uh, <laughs> it's already boiling. <laughs> Boana. I need a cup of water. Sure. Oh, you, in a you need water. <laughs> in a kuja. Edna. So, here, Bosire, kikombe ya maji. Kikombe ya maji. Usimula tena chupa. <laughs> to yeah. welcome you to the conversation, Thank CT has the day is like a proverb. This week, the proverbs are from the Republic of Kenya. Mm. You've been to that country. Hopefully. Yeah. Mm. Oh, I think so. Uh, <laughs> they are in Kiswahili. So listen to the proverb, and then you first of all translate it to English. Translate it to English. And okay. then you give us your interpretation of it. Jeez, okay. Aye. It's a simple proverb. Uh, we, we determined in the previous hour it was a constitutional proverb mm -hmm. and it's something that gets to the heart of very many things and many people in Kenya. Hata matumbo ni nyama. Hata matumbo ni nyama. <laughs> Even the entrails constitute meat. Entrails. Mm -hmm. <laughs> to mesquia, very many words. I'm telling you, we've not heard entrails yet this morning. I mm -hmm. like it. What mm -hmm. what was the first one? Offals. Offals, yeah. Mm -hmm. the second or not? No, the, uh, prof, prof called it. Huh? Tripe. Tripe. Tripe, yeah, yeah. Yes. Same. Then now we are in. He, 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 tells, he tells you whether he went for uh, further education. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they call it tripe there. Tripe. Yes. <laughs> and there's entrails. Entrails, mm. yes. Even entrails. But these days you can Google. Yeah. You, you can, can Google. give you all the options. Yeah. Eh? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but. Uh, from what from just the basic understanding is that um, you should not discriminate any part of an animal mm -hmm. what can be consumed can be consumed because it gives you nourishment because that's what you're looking for mm -hmm. nourishment so for me that's that's what i can i can look at it so whatever comes your way in life you take it as it is come on in by you just hang in there somehow it's gonna go through don't complain and say, oh, you know, that guy's doing better than me. I, you know, just focus on your journey. Brother, you know, when you mention nourishment, this one I have to ask because I've heard <laughs> people say this. What's the nourishment when you eat hooves? <laughs> Fiber. <laughs> so the hooves are used for something else, but uh, there are many components in, in, the, in, the, in the... And you know, the thing, that, the, the thing that is amusing is that uh, traditionally, yeah. we used to consume a very big portion of a cow or a goat, for example, when, when, when we, we killed it. Mm. These days, uh, we just want to eat steak mm. and uh, we forget about anything else. We used to eat the head, yes. we used to eat the tongue, we used yes, to eat no. uh, the heart, uh, yes. the liver, the yes. intestines. Then use the skin for something else, use the hoof for something else. Mm. Yes. Exactly. So I think we, we somewhere mm. along the way, we missed, we missed, you the, you we missed the river by a boat. You've stopped eating those things. <laughs> 
Ja, din start. Ja, ja, ja. Så. <laughs> In the first place. <laughs> So now I'm learning slowly as I'm getting older that uh, actually there are other more important things on stick yeah. <laughs> in, the, right. in the car with the good. Right. <laughs> But Sire, what is asset leasing and asset leasing finance? So um, list, the leasing concept is uh, around utilization. So for a company or a person, they need equipment to be able to carry out their business. So for example uh, a manufacturing company needs uh, vehicles to transport its goods mm-hmm. after finishing to the market. Mm-hmm. There are various ways they can be able to acquire this this asset. Eh? One is that they have cash in their pocket, they go to the dealer, they buy. Or they have got a facility to the bank, mm-hmm. they go and get a loan. Mm-hmm. Uh, they buy the asset. Mm-hmm. These two uh, concepts um, essentially give the ownership of the asset to the, the person who has bought. Yeah. Leasing tries to remove that ownership from the person who is consuming that asset mm. and tries to make the person just focus on utilizing the asset drawing out its economic value mm. and not getting the risks and rewards that come with ownership because there are many risks and rewards that come with ownership mm. so in essence it's just a contract which allows somebody who has an asset but has no use of it to lease or rent to a person who is in need of that asset but doesn't want ownership and for a period of time and there's a financial consideration that is done or is paid uh, on a monthly or quarterly basis so in a simple nutshell it's just is that simple so for example if the best example that everybody knows is mm. rent yes if you start a company and you want to uh, open an office mm. uh, in town you go um, you get an office space um, they give you a contract you sign the contract for five years mm. with an exit let's say for three years mm. you pay a rent for that, that period of time of five years mm. But at the end of the five years, you don't own the asset. You, you leave, don't own the building. You leave the office. So if office you want to leave, space. you exit the office. Yeah. Mm. If you want to continue, you sign a new, a new yes. contract extending, extending the lease. So in, in, a, in, in a simple nutshell, that's a perfect example mm-hmm. of a lease. So lease and rent are synonymous. They are synony- synonymous. Uh, so even, even the payments are called rentals. Mm. Yeah. So mm-hmm. they are synonymous. Mm. So you just, when you rent something, you just, you just want to use it. Mm. You're not concerned about ownership. Mm. Mm. So in the in the case of asset leasing that when you go now to the other equipment like uh, uh, motor vehicles or manufacturing equipment or fridges whatever laptops um you essentially targeting companies because they derive economic value from those assets so if it's a manufacturing company they know they can be able to uh, uh, produce goods with their man- uh, with their production plant sell those goods and be able to generate income to do what pay the rentals mm. so there's a direct link that you need to have economic value from the asset that you're leasing. Mm. Yeah. So essentially what we're saying now is that if we're looking at it from a business point of view, yeah. okay, so we get it. We, we talked about, le- uh, we, we saw other things as well. Supermarkets, retail chains, yes. renting shelves and yes. things like that. Yes. So all you're doing is providing the service. You're coming, putting the goods on the shelf. You continue with the business. We yes. can see with the police renting a vehicle so they don't deal with maintenance and things yes. like that. What then makes it attractive for businesses, for assets, So you know I'm confused. Leasing. Leasing. Mm. Right? Yeah. What makes it attractive for even startups, young businesses who are getting into it, maybe don't have capital to purchase everything that you need to start. What else then makes it attractive for you say this is actually the way you can go and push the business angle. So let's give an example of the police eh? with the motor vehicle. Mm. Or let's give any, any any example of somebody who is leasing a motor vehicle. Mm. So first of all there's aspect of the initial capital you need to acquire those vehicles. Mm. So if you don't have that capital or you may have the capital but you have got many needs mm. right so you want you, have, you want to expand your your plant or whatever so there's competing needs for this for this uh, this money mm. so you go for the leasing because the leasing uh, asset leasing allows you to be able to acquire those assets for utilization without investing initially mm-hmm. so that already frees you frees up your capital to use it for other things in mm-hmm. your business for example expand your capacity etc mm-hmm. etc for the motor vehicle for example Um, asset leasing is what we call a bundle service. Mm-hmm. So not only do you get the motor, vi- motor vehicle, but there are two options here. So there's one which is called a dry lease. A dry lease is where you get the motor vehicle, mm-hmm. it is insured, and there is tracking. Okay. Now the responsibility of the person who leases, or is called a, a lessee, mm. will be to maintain the vehicle, mm-hmm. service and maintenance. Mm. The second option is something called a wet lease. Mm-hmm. Now a wet lease has got all the three I've said, plus service. Now service can come in two forms. You can price just the regular services. 
which are scheduled. Mm. So this guy, when he gets that one with the scheduled services, he knows he has a vehicle, mm. it is insured, it has got tracking, and when it's supposed to go for service, 5,000, 10,000, 15,000 kilometers, yeah. he just takes it to the OEM, mm-hmm. they service the vehicle, mm. and him, he continues using the, the, the asset. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Then there's a full maintenance lease where it now includes the other maintenance aspects which are not regular. Mm. Mm-hmm. You know, a vehicle as it gets older, at some point, some other things start breaking down. Mm. Yeah. So those ones are not, are not regular maintenance services, but you can, that can be included in that bundled service. So now the person who leases that vehicle can focus on their core business. Mm-hmm literally co- yeah. focus on their core business. So if they're a manufacturer, they'll focus on just producing their product, product. and putting it to the market. Mm-hmm. Because mm-hmm. now they know if they've got a full maintenance lease, the vehicle is in, out. When it's supposed to be serviced, it goes to the service, service uh, uh, center, it is serviced. When it's, uh, insurance is due, they don't even think about it because the, the, the lessor, who is a person who has leased to them, mm. knows that this uh, like, uh, insurance is ending on this date, I need to renew it. Mm. ETC, ETC. Mm. Then there are also other financial uh, considerations. So, mm. Um, if you own the asset, the, the vehicle, there's something called ob- obsolescence. Every asset has got an economic life time. Mm. A long time ago, if you bought a Mercedes-Benz, the old Mercedes-Benz trucks with a long nose like this, mm. it had a 20-year uh, economic life. Mm. These days, uh, because manufacturers want to always be pro- producing a newer vehicle every other day, it has got five to eight-year economic life. Mm. So if you get a truck and you're using it, and you're, you're pushing it, and you're sweating the asset, mm. Within five or six years, it has already surpassed its economic life. Mm. But if you own it, now you have to start thinking about how to dispose it. Mm. <laughs> then you wonder, am I supposed to be selling vehicles or am I supposed to be focusing on my manufacturing? Right. Leasing removes that obsolescence management from you. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So at the end of the lease, there are many options. But if you want to end that lease because those vehicles you feel have become too old and you want a new one, at the end of the lease, you return the vehicles to the lessor. Mm. Mm. And then you sign a new contract for, for new assets. Mm. But Bosire, you're still spending money on these assets. For, of course. Right? Yes. So apart from that administrative headache, because it sounds like, you know, there's an administrative headache. Yeah. You don't have to have a transport manager who thinks, oh, Gary Mesha insurance, or oh, you need to go for service, you need to do this and the other. Apart from that, mm-hmm. you're still spending money every month yeah. on this. You're fueling the vehicle and also you are paying the lease on a monthly, quarterly, whatever yeah. contractual terms you have. Yeah. So, the, are you saying the only benefit that we are no, really it, deriving out of this is removal of that administrative headache? No, uh, there are also financial benefits. Okay. So, for example, um, the whole. So, if, for example, if you take a loan and you're buying an asset, in your PL, there's what we call the expense items. Yeah? What yeah. is a PL? The profit and loss uh, statement. Mm. Okay. <laughs> There's what you call the expense items. So you've got your, your income and then your, your, your expenses and you get your gross profit. Mm. So uh, in the case of a loan, um, only the interest portion of the loan mm. is expensed. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But in the case of a lease, lease, um, lease, a lease uh, asset, the whole rental is expensed. Mm. Therefore, you've got tax benefits. Mm. Okay? Mm-hmm. And then, of course, the lease rentals generally mm. are slightly let's say 15, 20% lower than if you had gone for a loan in terms of the payment. Okay, so mm-hmm. these, are, these are buy off there where you've got, your, the, the rentals are slightly lower than what you'd pay if you had gone for, for a loan. Last but not least, remember this, this, more often than not, you will not inject any money. So you save the money that you'd have injected if you had gone for a loan that given you 20% or 80% or 50% uh, financing mm. to use in other things in your business. Mm. So what are we right. talking about here? Length and breadth of things that you can actually do with asset leasing. Because you try to imagine, okay, so it's just a service that you're providing in terms of your business. We are essentially saying that there's really, okay, I'm assuming, and you can stop me, um, that there's nothing that you really can't then lease. We go from office space to vehicles to shelves to, if we're looking at hospitality, beds, linen, crockery, all kinds of things. Are we saying that we've gotten to the space whereby essentially all you need to do is turn up with your people and your expertise and plug and play and go? That is a very good question. Yes. So there's no asset which cannot be leased. Hmm. There's none. Land, buildings, laptops, your machinery here, your cameras, furniture. In fact, we have got a good example. One of these uh, MNCs in town here, they have a uh, seven MNC. story. Uh, <laughs> sorry. Mm-hmm. Uh, multinational corporations. Uh-huh. Mm. They have a, a seven-story uh, 
headquarters mm-hmm. and everything including the carpet mm-hmm. including the partitioning of the of the wall mm-hmm. is leased boy everything pbx mm-hmm. laptops name it mm-hmm. they are leased so leasing has no parameters that you can only lease asset 1 and asset 2 mm. mm. for as long as the asset has got economic value you can lease it mm-hmm. because at the end of the day you are simply paying a small uh, consideration every month mm-hmm. or every quarter and then using the asset to derive revenue for yourself mm. especially for a business mm. so even on the personal front uh, in more advanced markets your phone why why would you want to buy a, an I, I, iphone i don't know what which after two years is obsolete you just lease it Yes, you know, I'm listening to you. I started listening to you w- w- with the uh, lorry. Mm. Okay? Yeah. The terms you you seem to be applying are either accounting terms or financial terms. Because if we all subscribed to it, these ancient vehicles we see on the road would not exist. There's a certain category of business in this town um garbage collection yeah it's like a, a requirement <laughs> for that business that the vehicle m- be the oldest not Runs just oldest ugliest <laughs> m- smoking like smoking <laughs> you you actually wonder what on when you that those and breakdowns yes they they, they form they, they, they actually garbage the the, 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 the vehicle themselves are garbage yeah. the, yes the, a, a, exactly so and then when it comes to vehicles yeah you find vehicles that sh- you might say might not be on the road but they're on the road and they're doing the thing so yes i understand book value all these n- lovely financial accounting terms but for us even when you talk about loss of value you may not value it somebody else will value it you will find someone who will value it mm-hmm. and every time i go to the rural areas i'm reminded that's of, of, of that simple fact and it's something as small as this plastic water bottle that we throw away mm. you, you it barely touches the ground somebody has picked it up mm. yeah yeah definitely and they have use for it yeah so when you say leasing it is lovely to be in a place like the way we are in but then it explains to me why it is perhaps we import very many second hand vehicles yes that is what i wanted to actually your, your point is is very right so it, the kenyan situation is a bit complicated because there are other factors which um make people want to have an asset for 200 years yes one is this obsession with us kenyans or africans in general of ownership this pen is mine this pen this pen i bought it with my own money we are obsessed with that with that that notion of ownership yangu yangu no wait me i don't understand obsession but it's mine <laughs> <laughs> why is uh, i'm not obsessed <laughs> it's mine <laughs> so that, that is that is <laughs> i mean so uh, every time i lay claim to my property i'm obsessed <laughs> of course when you go when you go around and you know <laughs> well I know, i know you understand what i'm saying so <laughs> but apart from that also um like i said um we have also also got what 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 you call rules and regulations mm-hmm. so for example what the government is trying to in- introduce now where vehicles have to go for inspection mm-hmm. whether they are commercial or passenger vehicles yes. is critical mm-hmm. because that leads to something else that leads to a situation where then you'll put a cap and say if for example your vehicle is more than 7 years old you need to be paying a certain amount of money every year mm-hmm. what that negates is w- w- why because the old the the the, the vehicle is the road, yeah it's, blah, it's polluting blah. it's uh, all sorts of what, it's using more space on the road no it's polluting the, the, it's polluting environment. the environment it's, uh, it's making it's noise it's a disaster <laughs> <laughs> i drive an old so, car so, that's why i'm asking it's this it's slowing question. down traffic. Yeah, so you'll be you'll be you you, you get end to pay what? <laughs> so what this happens is when mm-hmm. when, when you get to that point you have to decide mm. would i rather let go of this vehicle and get a new one mm. or not <laughs> okay it brings a new headache yes who, not who? really a headache it's, it's very simple so now that is solved by leasing mm. so in more advanced uh, markets what happens is when you go to the dealer they offer you the option of buying or leasing, or leasing. Mm. but they make the leasing more attractive of course because it has got all these parameters that are coming along with it insurance and uh, service and maintenance etc mm. then you know i bought this mercedes benz s380 mm. Mm. in another four years there's going to be a new version mm. and because i want to always be driving the latest vehicle Why don't I just take the lease for four years 
when the new, new version comes, my lease will have come to an end. I take it back to the dealer. They sort it out. They give me a new one on a new contract. So in Kenya, if we don't have that uh, aspect of putting parameters in terms of how long your vehicle can be on the road. Yeah. Then we have that problem where you have all these old vehicles on the road without being any consequence. Secondly, for example, for the, for the, um, the one for the garbage. I understand them because where they take the garbage is the issue. <laughs> You might go there with a brand new vehicle and then <laughs> you come out with all your tires. You don't come <laughs> <out>. <laughs> so if you had very organized uh, waste disposal uh, systems, then it so you have easy. to drive a scary vehicle. You have to scare them. <laughs> so they had run away fast and you dump your you dump your your, your garbage and you <laughs> So there are many factors which come along to play here, <laughs> which then which then now slow down that progress of ensuring that people are always willing to invest in whether by leasing or by buying, mm. in, into newer, newer, newer yeah, assets. Yeah. Bosiri Bogonko is an asset leasing finance expert. He's also country director at a company called Rentco. We are talking about asset leasing finance and just trying to understand this. It's uh, catching on in Kenya and there are very many businesses that are moving that way. So we, talk, we are talking about now here asset leasing. Uh, last year in December, we were talking about office space leasing and then just saying, just come into a space that's already plug and play for you. It's done for you. Before that, we had talked to another person who had said, I actually offer staff. So instead of just you focusing, you, your job is broadcasting. You're Spice FM. Why do you need cleaners? Why do you need security? Why do you need... Mm -hmm. You can lease those. Eh. You see, this issue, uh, th there's what you call the reality mm. or ground, okay? The, a vehicle by its very nature, for example, loses in value every day you use it. That's why it's supposed to cost less. But that doesn't quite happen in this country. You'll find, for instance, when you talk about imported vehicles, and yeah. someone tells you, in Kenya, they don't talk about the new car, they talk, it's a new registration. Mm. So you're actually buying the registration. Mm. That's what's new. That's correct. Okay? It's a KDH. It's a KDH. Yeah. But the guy is as ancient as time. <laughs> it, but, but what it means, somebody somewhere who follows the rules that you're saying has understood three years down the line here, a three year old car here. Hi, yeah, yeah, it's a new bar. It's, it, it it's can't new. get that thing is new, okay? Yeah. Now it's a 2021. Ah, yeah, yeah. Hey, yeah. Was, <laughs> you got <laughs> Now, the concept that you are referring to mm. is an excellent concept, but it is attached to another concept that is sometimes difficult to comply with. It's called repayment. Repayment involves a certain assurance level of assurance of a steady income okay now in an economy such as this one it gets really genuinely tricky and hairy okay now people who are in the business such as the one you're in the question i want to ask is do you take enough time to explain to the people who come to you and you do business with what to do in times of distress because it seems to be the understanding is you will be paying because things are good now what if things are not good. What if you didn't plan and somebody in the industry you work in has gone belly up or it has issues that are beyond your control and suddenly you're not able to manage or you're not able to live up to the details of your obligations. What do you do? Do you take the time to be able to tell your clients and your partners in your business what to do and how they should go about it? Yeah, that's a very good question. Um, so basically in Kenya, a lot of the leasing is not to individuals. It is to corporates mm -hmm. or the government. Corporates and government have their legal departments. So at the onset of the lease, even before you sign anything, there's a bunch of documents which is sent to their legal department. They need to go through that and come back with any questions, concerns that they find in the contract. So there are situations where they have come back with one or two things that have actually been changed in the contract. Therefore, for, for in our case, it's a lot easier because each, most companies do not go into any contract without their legal team going through all the contracts that need to be signed or agreements. So we negate that, that uh, fact that nobody knew how to manage a situation where the, the, you know, the economy has gone down or there's war or whatever. Also in the contracts, there's what we call force majeure, which, um, which encompasses or envisions certain situations taking place and therefore how that contract can be ex 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 exited. So uh, where I find a problem in what you have described is in more individual loaning, for example. Mm. So individuals, when they go to the, the bank to get a, a loan to buy a car, they rarely take their time to, to read what is written in the contract. Well, you can say also that it's a responsibility of the financer to, 
to educate or at least discuss some of those fine 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 items but when you get into a contract of something aren't you concerned about you being on the negative side if there's any and how you're going to manage yourself in that situation mm. that's that's my challenge to most people so <clears throat> we need to take our time before we get into anything to understand mm. everything mm. and even if the other person doesn't tell you <laughs> The last time I checked, Kenya has got one of the highest literacy rates in Africa. Why we went to school? Why why did we go to, go to school? Okay. To understand things, to question, mm-hmm. to challenge, All right. and say change this, change that. Or I feel this is too harsh. Then I say, okay, this thing is too tough. No, I'm not okay. saying it. L- 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 <laughs> let me give you a parallel. Yes, this thing of seeking to understand this thing, yeah. so that you understand the problems that may occur. Yeah. We are fast catching up with the worst with the rates of divorces in this country. Would you say people are ill informed before they get into marriage that I, they haven't been given all the details that they yes, need? I would, yes. <laughs> yes. I will answer that out. very yes. categorically. Yes. Ooh. I will answer that very categorically. In fact, eh? <laughs> next, you need to invite me for the next one as now a marriage counselor. <laughs> <laughs> the fact of the matter is now, marriage. Okay, sorry. Now, now that you have, have debated a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> the fact of the matter is most people get into marriage because of love. I call it infatuation. You're just seeing yourself, the girl or the boy, in, through blue blue glasses. They look immaculate. Have you been through them when they are their worst? So when you go signing that contract in front of church, God, I don't know, God knows who. Are you sure? The same way you're talking about the loan, you don't know whether in a, in a few years you'll have lost your job. Are you sure that this thing is going to last the whole time? Are you sure that when, when this guy loses his job, you're going to hang in there and say, this is my husband, so let me just uh, support him because we are married, etc., etc.? The fact of the matter is most people don't understand the integrity that is in a marriage process. They don't. Why? Because the elders in the community have abdicated their duty to teach their children what goes. Ah, it's okay. We all, in fact, the, you look at the wedding. Guys come dressed to kill. But is they all what, know. Is that not what we are supposed to do? Half of them, <laughs> half of them are, are divorced. All those people who are there, half of them are divorced. And they're not telling you. They're not telling you that some of these things are difficult. How do you how do you manage situations? You know, your, you, your husband, your wife has cheated. How do you manage that situation? You've gotten to the heart of the matter. Why I asked you the question is I was relating to something that we consider very important, and something which we actually consider one of the most important decisions we make in our lives. So right, are we yeah. saying that we are a society that don't bother to do due diligence even on the very things that are most important to us? And when you bring in the issue of the abdication of duty of the so-called elders. That's precisely the point. People already have the experience and know coming in. You have the experience in leasing. I don't. I know what I need. That experience of leasing, it is you who has it. Mm. So surely, who is the duty bearer? I have a duty, yes. But surely, don't you think you're shirking your duty just like those elders? But I give you a contract which is written down. Does, a con- does the elder give me a contract showing me what is in yes, marriage? The contract no, is it doesn't. The contract is the person that you're seeing. It doesn't. That's no. the contract. <laughs> That's basically, the contract. not at all. Basically, the, the leasing company should do a lot more in terms of educating people. So this, this is the positive. This is the negative. These are the red flags, these are the pitfalls, these are how to navigate around that. And should you get into such a situation, this is how we can walk the journey with you on that other side. So generally, generally that's what all leasing companies do. Okay. So really? But, yes, they do. They do? Yes. Mm. So, I mean, uh-huh. Yes. Okay. They, in fact, if the leasing deals usually take quite a long time. And most of that time is because of the integrity of what is in the contracts. Mm. Mm. So many, many customers raise issues about what's in the contract and you have a discussion about it mm. yeah. so we, who gets we, the short end of the stick here when it comes to these uh, um, agreements I know you won't say everybody's balanced everybody takes some equal share but it, what I guess the broader question is what would be some of the disadvantages here uh, well the disadvantages of, of leasing of course would be just maybe centered around ownership if you want to own mm. um, the asset mm. That's a different conversation. Uh, I think maybe what I should have said at the beginning was uh, there are two forms of, of leases. Eh? Mm-hmm. There's something called an operating lease mm-hmm. and now I'm called a finance lease. So the oper- operating lease predicates only utilization. Mm-hmm. And therefore, at the end of the lease, the asset is returned back to the lessor, sorry, yeah. okay. to the lessor to, to do whatever they want to do with it. Mm-hmm. The fin- finance lease is predicated on ownership at the end of the 
lease okay. term. Mm-hmm. It's, like, it's a rent to own. Yes, it's like a rent to own. Okay. So there are two ways that happens for the for the companies that do the finance lease. Mm. They'll either build uh, what we call a residual value into the payments, monthly payments that you make over that period, so that at the end of the term, uh, you the asset is transferred to the person who is leasing, mm. or there's a pre-agreed residual value that this person will pay at the end. So they pay these monthly payments until this point, and then and at then be this end, there's a, a bullet payment that they, they, they pay for them to get ownership. <coughs> so, um, of so the two types, which is more popular in Kenya? Which one is? Because we are seeing that this is this is a new way the businesses are now actually looking at. This is a way to go. Which is the more popular one? The is more popular is the lease or the financing lease. The finance lease is one which is more popular because Why? of still ownership. There's that oh. still aspect of ownership. But now, uh, us and uh, a few other leasing companies mm. are driving people towards the operating lease aspect. Yeah, and mm. that's why uh, at the co- at the onset, it was easier to sell that concept to corporates and mm. government because then they understand that they don't they don't need to own the asset; they just need to utilize the asset over a period of time. Then they let it off and get a new a new a new deal. What's the benefit to you as the leasing company when someone picks up the operating lease instead of the finance lease? For me, there's no advantage because what happens is um. Um, so a, a leasing company can get its asset in two forms. One, it can have it, its own internal funds, which is go, goes and buys the asset mm-hmm. and leases to the to the to the customer. Then there's something called a leveraged leasing. Leveraged leasing is where I go to the bank, and then the bank gives me ninety percent financing. Mm-hmm. Then I have to top up the ten percent mm-hmm. because when I go to the OEM, I have to pay them in full. For them to be able to lease the asset to me, so this financing is both debt, ninety percent from the bank, yeah. then equity, which is ten percent, which is the leasing company's contribution. Okay. Okay. So at the end of the, the operating lease, you see, um, a leasing company's job is not to ha- have assets sitting somewhere. Mm. Their job is to facilitate companies or individuals to be able to get an asset. Mm. Mm. At the end of the lease, for me to be able to recoup this ten percent, I have to dispose of the asset. Mm. Right. And at fair market value. Yeah. So I'm assuming that, I'm hoping that, that their f- fair market value will be more than this 10%, than that, the 10% I, that I invested. That invested. Mm. And therefore, I make my, my small margin there. But in the course of the four years, because it's leveraged, the rentals that come from the, from the customer are used have, to offset the facility. Of the, the 90%. The, okay. the bank that okay. g- gave us, yeah. So ideally, leasing companies are what we call residual value investors. Yeah, especially the operating ones. Mm. If they don't have uh, their own internal funds, which of course many people not have their own internal funds, because you can understand, for example, the government through the NPS and TNT, uh, the National Treasury mm. <laughs> and National <laughs> Police. T and the National Treasury. Yes, in mm. 20, 20, 2012, 2013, when the uh, when the leasing pro- uh, project started, mm. the police force was running around two thousand two thousand three hundred vehicles. Mm-hmm. As we speak now. They're running almost 7,000, 6,500, 7,000 vehicles mm-hmm. through the lease, which is an, that's, that, well, that's, that's the, the other advantage I wanted to, to explain. You see, if you've got a budget, let's say, for buying vehicles mm-hmm. over a period of time, four years, mm-hmm. but your requirement is you can buy 200, 200, 200, 200 over the four-year period, yeah? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So your, but your requirement is actually all the 800. Yeah. It's only that you don't have the budget. Yeah. That monthly budget here, of that yearly budget here to buy the 200 that you can buy here the first year yes mm. Mm. you can that use that you can use this money to lease the 800 units at the same time at the same time here at, mm. the, at the onset okay now remember this budget that you used in the first year you haven't included your insurance you haven't included your service and maintenance you haven't yeah. included all these other things yeah but that money when you use it for leasing first of all you can get all these vehicles at the onset yeah then secondly because it's a bundled service, it also includes those other services that require. Yeah. Mm. So it means that now for the next four years, even if you don't get any more vehicles, you have reached your capacity from the onset. You're not incrementally increasing your capacity. Mm. So for, if I can give an example, for example, for the GOK, between 2013 and 29, uh, 2020, 2021, uh, there was a research that was done. Just from the police leasing, <coughs> crime rates went down by 40%. Why? Because now there was, there was no excuse that there, there is no vehicle available. Mm. Because this leasing uh, for the government, not only does it have service and maintenance, eh, they also get a fuel card. I was going to ask about that. Mm-hmm. Which is 
which is uh, now negotiated between the uh, national treasury and the fuel marketers. Yeah. So the vehicle that is in Lokichogyo, for as long as there is a, that station around there, they'll, they have no reason. They have, they have, no, they have, they have no fuel. Mm. The other thing that they did was, um, in the government contract, they said, no vehicle of the police will travel more than 50 kilometers to do service and maintenance. Mm -hmm. So what does that force the OEMs to do? To they have up. to have a service center close to as many police stations as possible. Mm -hmm. Lest they get fined yes. for the vehicle going beyond 50 certain. kilometers. Yeah. So you can imagine places like uh, Mandera, which had never seen a service station, now have, have got a service station that is a Toyota service station, a Nissan service station, a CMC service station. Mm. Because now, mm. These guys could not be able to one open the service station by themselves there. So they collaborate with the locals there. Mm. Somebody at a garage. Yeah. So they come to the garage, they upgrade the garage to a certain level. And therefore, creating employment, you know, there's now that whole market becomes busy, even the people there are confident of buying new vehicles because they know there's a certified garage mm. or service center around. So there are many advantages to it. And uh, I think uh, for the least, just like a loan, your only risk is if you're not able to fulfill your financial obligation, obligation. of course, then the lessor, in case of a lease, or the bank, in case of, in case of a loan, has to come and uh, secure the asset. Yeah. Because the asset is the security of the lease of the, of the or, or the loan of the contract. Yeah. Okay. Without it, then it means that they are, they are losing. Okay. Right? So, wait. Essentially, you're a middleman. You're an aggregator. Okay, you're an aggregator middleman. <laughs> <laughs> the, the reason why I ask the question is because you don't own the vehicles. In some cases, no, no, we own the vehicles. Uh -huh. We own the vehicles because remember, uh, I explained to you, you the. You own the vehicles. Yes, mm. the vehicle is mine. As so a leasing company. You, uh, good. Then, if you own the vehicle, where do you get the vehicles from? How do you get the vehicles? So, remember, I explained to you the leverage lease. Yes. So, if I come to you and you've got a company and you want ten trucks, mm. I will ask you what trucks do you want. You will tell me Sino. You will tell me Fao. You will tell me Suzu, whichever. I will go to that uh, company. I'll get a quote for buying those, those terms. Yes. Now, based on this quote, I'll prepare for you a monthly rental fee to be paying me when I lease the vehicle to you. If we are agreeable, then it's my responsibility to look for funds to be able to, to acquire these assets. The uh -huh. <coughs> so if I've got the money, I'll just go and buy the vehicles and I lease them to you. But because we want to increase the capacity of the leasing company to be able to serve more customers, my money, I will say, I've got 10%. Why can't I go to the bank and they give me 90%? So I get a loan of the value of 90%, for example. Mm -hmm. I, in, I invest 10%. I go to Isuzu, for example, if I picked Isuzu, I pay them their money. They give me my trucks. My truck, because it's on a loan, is richer under me and the bank that gave me the loan. Then I come and lease the vehicles to you. You pay me your monthly rental. You pay your loan obligation. That monthly rental, I have to make sure that it can be able to do what? Offset my facility. Mm -hmm. And... Then at the end of the lease, yes. in an operating lease is what, what which we are operating. If you don't want the asset, it's finished. You don't want to extend. Then you return the asset to me. Now it's my responsibility to find out how I'm going to dispose of it. Okay. To recoup my ten percent investment. Remember, I pay yes. this deposit mm -hmm. here. Yes, and, and but, but th this car will require servicing. Yes. You're not a garage. No. So is that part of the arrangement you have with the place where you get the vehicle yes. from? Yes. That's why I called it a bundle service. So right. the bundle service means I'm providing for you all these all these services. Eh? Yes. It means I have already have an agreement. Negotiated. How those services provided. Yes. So you, when you get the truck, the day it's supposed to have service and have service included in the cost, mm. you just take it with Suzu. Okay. And then me, I deal with the Suzu. Okay. They'll just tell me, truck X has come, blah, blah, here's an invoice. Me, I pay Suzu. You just take the truck, it's, it's serviced, psh, gone. Mm. What do you do with vehicles that are returned? We have to dispose of them. Because remember, we have to rec recoup our 10% that we invested. And then look for something else to do. So what happens is, uh, at the end of an operating lease, uh, the, the, less, the lessee has got several options. Mm -hmm. One, if they feel the asset is still economically viable, they can extend the lease. Mm -hmm. One year, two years, three years to continue using the asset. Second, they say, no, this asset has become too old. I need a new, new assets and a new lease. So they return the asset. Mm -hmm. And then we sign a new contract for new vehicles. The third option is they can return the asset, but they say, for example, it's uh, these multinationals, for example, they have um, leased um, 
Subaru uh, Foresters, for example. Mm -hmm. Then they say, uh, I think we have got some long-standing employees here. We can sell it off to them. Yes. Yeah. No, we can give them as Gift. uh, gifts. Mm. So they come, they negotiate, they say, okay, this lease has ended, but we'd like to retain the vehicle. The vehicle. Can you give us a price? So as we'll go to the market, we get a fair market value, we tell them, if you buy want to retain it. those vehicles, these are the, the money you're going to buy it with. So they, they buy off the asset. Then they do whatever they this want. This arrangement do. that you have, does it just re refer to the vehicle or can the vehicle come with the drivers? So in more advanced uh, uh, markets, it can come, that bundle can include as many services as possible. We haven't got Driver, there yet. No, we haven't. Why not? Because first of all, um, and we are going to get there because of what he said, now the, the employee has become like an asset. Mm. Therefore, they can be, they can be leased out. Mm. So more and more companies are coming up where they are, they are giving even drivers or whatever, or whatever employee on a lease basis. Mm. Let me put that in, in quotes, on a lease basis. So you just pay a monthly fee over a period of time. You've hired that guy for three years, but that guy is an empl employee of the that company. Yeah. So we're getting there. It can even come with a fuel card. The only problem with the fuel card is in Kenya, the fuel is not very stable in terms of pricing. Mm. Mm. So you'd rather the, the lessee handle that they deal with it they deal with it because the, the fluctuation is too much yeah. sometimes it goes up by 30 percent then it, you know so all those services can be bundled into a lease and provided to the customer and in, with due to due course we're going to get there for sure Boy, i'm telling you this is just eye-opening for business mm. you know you think about starting a business and then you're thinking how much do i need in terms of capital expenditure and all that headache can be removed when you get into business you lease very many of these services and you start your business. That's for sure. It's a way to go. Thank you very much, Bosire, for joining us today. You're most welcome. Bosire Bogonko is an asset leasing finance expert, a country director at Rentco. Thank you very much for tuning in to Kenya's biggest conversation today. It's been a Justice Thursday conversation with the LSK Vice President and uh, Professor Kivuda Kibwana. And now again, a uh, business conversation. This is The Situation Room, the only way to start your day.